Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm so excited to show you this game because this is literally, as far as I can tell, the longest game I have ever played. And it was a league game for the 2022 league against Giulio, and they are um, playing a shadow. I had We had talked about maybe using action tokens, I had suggested two action tokens, and they agreed, at which point I let them choose side and they chose to play Shadow with me as free people. So I'm just gonna jump in. It's a very long game. I'll try to go relatively quickly, but it's it's really exciting. There are a lot of twists and turns, so I hope, I hope you enjoy it, and I look forward to looking it over with you because I'm sure there are things that I missed. So you can see starting hands, I got Vile of Galadriel, which is obviously a great, great card, and happy to see scouts early on, and they got Black Captain Commands, Many Kings. So these are two, these are all good cards. They allocate one eye and roll one more, and we both get sort of a nice, nice starting roll. These are all, these are good starts for both of us. Um, all right, so uh, they muster eyes in guard. I play Vile, uh, happy to cycle into a new character card. I'm always looking early on to maybe get Aragorn out of the fellowship and crowning him. So depending on what, I draw, it's possible to, um, yeah, I probably couldn't do it unless, unless that was, we prove the swifter. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't crown Aragorn this turn, but still it might've been, that would have been exciting. Okay. Um, and even if it's not this turn, getting something that separates companions for a Palantir is still something that I look for early in the game. And there are three cards, I think that do that. Gua here, we prove the swifter and there and back again. Oh, and I will go alone. No, maybe there and back again doesn't separate. I can't remember if there are... Anyway, um, there are quite a few character cards that do that. All right, so they... Um, let's see, they get Sauron to war. And then I move the Fellowship. And the Fellowship gets hit on the first move. Obviously, don't love to see that. But that's why I use the Palantir first. In case this is a three, I can lose Gandalf to it. And it's a zero. So that's not really what I want because I can't even use this muster to hide. Uh, because Strider isn't the guide. If it was, if it was anything else that revealed me, I would, um, I would be very likely to lose Gandalf here, because it seems like Shadow is getting Saruman turn one, so I can get Gandalf turn two. So anyway, but I get revealed, and um, then they move armies around. So it looks like um, Old Forest Road may be attacked early. And because I had an early scouts, I know that maybe this Will of the West can be used to. Um, help reinforce that. And they're unlikely to have Swarm of Bats so early on. So I think it's likely that this unit is going to be able to make it into Woodland Realm, help me put the North to war, and just generally um, defend Woodland Realm a little bit better. So um, I'm going to wait. My plan is I'm going to wait until next round to hide the Fellowship because Shadow didn't even get any... Um, any character dice on turn one, and I can make uh, Strider the guide. I don't love making Strider the guide while Gandalf is still in the fellowship, but at least it will allow me to efficiently hide and then move at least once. So um, I think about the second move and I get my second army movement, I get um, the dwarf into Erebor because it looks like Shadow may be going north. Uh, Shadow gets Saruman, obviously that makes sense. And then I muster the north toward war, my thinking is if Shadow does not immediately attack into um, Old Forest Road, and I think even, even now if they do attack into Old Forest Road, I can use my action token to muster the north one more and then um, be prepared to muster once into Dale before they um, completely take over the north. So um, I muster the north once, they move armies some more. And now I use my, I, I, you know, it's nice to hold on to these tokens, but this is, a, a, I think, a good use of it. I'd be curious to know if, if you would have used it this way. Um, now the North is one away from war. So as soon as they attack into Old Forest Road, I'll be able to muster in Dale. And if they want to take out Dale first, and they have to go all the way around into Eastern Mirkwood and Northern Rovanian and then attack Dale. Or I guess the South Rounds and Easterlings could come in and attack Dale, but it would take a while. So the point is, North is one away from war. Yes, it's going to let them get the Witch King on turn two, but it's going to let me do uh, a more substantial defense of Dew. So that's my thinking. Um, 
and I draw Dane Iron Foot's Guard, which is obviously great. And let's see what Shadow draws. Shadow draws Nazgul Strike and Fighting Urkai, also good. And I make Strider Guide because I want to be able to hide and then move. Uh, they allocate one eye, roll two more, and I get two Palantirs and two Character Dice. So if I had known that I was going to get this roll, then obviously I would have been happy having Gandalf as Guide because I would have gotten to play all these Palantirs and would have um, still gotten to hide. But there's something like, I think, a 30% chance that I would only roll one character movement. And so I want to be able to hide and then move. Um, you know, it's not great to be able to, to, to not be able to lose Gandalf now, but I didn't roll the will of the West. I don't know. This, this, this was, this was, I think a really interesting turn. Would you have put Strider as guide? Would you have hid last round with the will of the West such that this turn you could just move with the fellowship, um, with Gandalf as guide? Um, I'm really curious to know um, what you would have done. Obviously, with this role, had I known I got this role, I definitely would have picked Gandalf as guide. But, okay. Um, so I go ahead and hide using Strider's ability. And um, I don't know, maybe that should have been a character die, but I think I want to just move twice, I think. Um, yeah, there are a lot of choices early on. So many choices. Okay. So they attack into old forest road and this is, yeah, I didn't even talk about this yet. This was a very weird role because I didn't roll any musters. And so when they attack into old forest road, putting the North to war, I'm not going to be able to muster in Dale unless I use a ring. And I don't know that I'm going to use a ring on that. And similarly, they didn't roll any musters. So even once they put the North to war by attacking to old forest road, they're not going to be able to get the witch King turn two. So a couple of weird situations that we didn't roll, neither of us rolled any musters, um, which is pretty unlikely, right? For, for even on four dice, I have a will of the West um, and a muster and an army muster. So one out of 16 chance that I don't roll any musters. All right. Anyway, they attack into Old Forest Road and I play scouts to retreat into Woodland Realm thinking that they probably don't have... Um, they probably don't have Swarm of Bats. They're probably going to attack into a Dale, um, and maybe they're not going to roll any sixes, and I'll be able to survive in Dale. So um, they get the North to war, but I'm not using a ring to muster once in Dale. And I move the Fellowship, and they miss. And then they take over Carrick, and they get a unit on the Fellowship. I pass, and then they attack into Dale, and um, we all miss. So... Um, this is now, um, a, you know, a decent defense of Woodland Realm because I got two extra regulars and a leader in there. Um, and maybe at some point I'll draw three Andrews archers. But um, I'm happy with this. That's the benefit of an early scouts. And I did spend half an action die um, moving. So, yeah. Okay. Now, at this point, um, what do you do as free people? I am going to predict that it would be very hard for you to predict what I'm about to do. So um, I'd be curious, be curious to know if you all have any thoughts you can think, what would I do as free people right here? And I think this is one of the things I really love about this game. There, there are sometimes you're, you're, you might not think of various options. And um, what I did was, because it's a long game, I want to keep going. I don't want to keep in suspense too long. What I did was I separated four companions to Gladden Fields, right? Like that's a normal thing to do on turn two. Um, and why did I do this? So my thinking is... Um, I don't really want to move a second time. Uh, Shadow Military is going relatively slowly. Um, and um, I don't know. I want to use this Palantir with Gandalf so I can get to draw more cards. I can play Dane Ironfoot's Guard or I could play, oh, I can't play Axe and Bow anymore, but I can play Dane Ironfoot's Guard. And then without too much trouble, especially if I get, um, we prove the Swifter, um, I can get Aragorn to Minas Tirith. I can get Gimli over into Erebor or Woodland Realm to help do more defense. Um, it just gives me a lot of options. I can get Legolas into Lorien. That can help me get the elves to war. So, um, I don't know. It's a little crazy, right? I didn't, I didn't want to move again with Strider's guide. If Gandalf was guide, I definitely would have moved again because I would have been very happy to kill off Gandalf, but I didn't want to kill off Strider. 
Um, and the chances of getting hit and revealed there are very high. Um, or maybe not revealed, but certainly hit. And then do I want to start taking corruption? I don't know. Um, and I could have been revealed into Moria. So, um, yeah, I think this is kind of crazy. Um, maybe, maybe a suboptimal play, but, but it was interesting. So curious to hear your thoughts on that turn. This is a very interesting turn too. Who do I pick as guide? And then what do I do with my dice? Right. I could have hid as, um, with, with my character die instead of hiding with the Palantir. And then I would have had Palantir, Palantir left. And with the second Palantir, I could have, you know, played or drawn a card. Um, I could have also just played Axe and Bow with a character die. Maybe that would have been very reasonable. I felt a little bad playing a character die with Axe and Bow and then a Palantir to play Dan Ironfoot's card. And then like, I end up with only two cards in hand. I don't know. All right. So that's kind of crazy. Um... All right, Shadow plays um, Many Kings, that makes sense. And then I play Dane Ironfoot's Guard. Now I have Gandalf as Guide, so I can use this. And um, I draw into Riders of Theoden, fine. And um, Shadow gets their armies moving. All right, so I draw another blue tile. Shadow gets more of a wound. Um, Fellowship declares into Holland. And um, at this point, I'm just hoping to kill off Gandalf and or get Aragorn down to um, Minas Tirith. So Shadow allocates one eye, rolls another, and I get a nice a nice roll here. Um, this is letting me use Gandalf, um, use Gandalf's ability for the Palantirs, and then um, get, you know, get Gandalf back in Fangorn. Now, um, I could, if I wanted to, get um, uh, a Strider down to Minas Tirith if I, if I want to use a ring. Right. If I don't move the fellowship at all, then I can use a ring. My thinking is I would rather kill off Gandalf um, and not have to use a ring this round, and then that'll I'll be able to like move once, maybe next round. If I have five dice next round, I could maybe move once and still move uh, Strider. Also, if I give myself a little bit more time to draw until we prove the Swifter, maybe I'll get it. Um, you know, it's a low chance, but it, depending on how many cards I draw. Um, all right. So, oh, also, if I get um, if I get uh, Fear Fire Foes or Book of Mazarbul, that's also a Palantir that I could play to move companions around. Even if it doesn't trigger necessarily getting the North to war or getting the Dwarves to war, it's still a nice way of using a Palantir efficiently to move companions. So, I think I'm going to play. Yeah. So I play Riders of Theoden here. I'm happy to reinforce Rohan. I drew Path of the Woeses. Okay, and. Um, then uh, Southrons and Easterlings are going to war. And I think that's really nice because they're threatening Day Without Dawn or they will be soon. Um, and then I think about playing another card first because I could play Elven Cloaks. But my thinking is I want to lose Gandalf. I can move once with the ring, with the character die. If I get missed, I can move, use, move a second time using this Palantir as a ring, um, using a ring on this Palantir and then hopefully get hit with Gandalf on that second move at least, and then get a turn three Gandalf, which is pretty nice. So that's my thinking. So I move once, I get missed. Now South Rons and Easterlings are to war. Obviously, if they have Day Without Dawn, that's not great for me um, because I'm about to use a ring. But I use a ring to um, move a second time. And um, they don't have they don't have Day Without Dawn. And odds were odds were pretty low, right? Only three out of three out of twenty four. So I move a second time. This time they do hit me. And I get the the only other zero reveal. So that's literally the only tile in the entire hunt pool that doesn't let me kill off Gandalf. Uh, very unlikely. I've been hit twice so far and um, twice on three moves and, and still no, cannot, impossible to have killed Gandalf. So, um, you know, I, I love that about this game. You know, there's just all of these different permutations about what can happen. All right, that's fine. So I get revealed. I go through Moria. That's fine. I'll lose, I'll lose Gandalf here. Hopefully I'll draw three tile. Um, nope, it's an eye. So uh, three tiles drawn, impossible to kill Gandalf. I'm really trying to kill the guy off and he's just not just like, no, it's fine. No corruption. I don't need to take any corruption. Um, so we're all pretty surprised by that. Very, I don't know exactly what the odds of that are, but like pretty low, uh, two out of two out of 16 and then one out of 15 combined with four out of 13, right? Those are like low odds for, for what's happened so far. 
All right, so I used a ring. Obviously, I'm not happy to use up a ring. It was, I think, a good good cause. I am making decent progress to the fellowship. Um, and I have this will of the West, I guess, that I can hide hide the fellowship. Um, all right, so they start moving. Um, they're going to muster the Witch King, and they're like, no, maybe not. Instead, I should play Morgul Wound. So um, I think that's the right play, because otherwise I was going to hide with the fellowship. So um, it's obviously uh, really nice for Shadow to get to um, do two damage with Morgul Wound. Um, I'm not happy about that. That was sad for the Fellowship. All right, so I pass again because I don't think they're going to play any more um, nasty things on the Fellowship. And honestly, if they do, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, it's fine. I'm happy for them to use up their ring. Um, all right, so they start mustering in Orthanc. They get the Witch King now. And um, I hide with the Fellowship because my plan is I got to kill off Gandalf. And to do that, I have to keep moving with the Fellowship. So um, not the best turn for me, but, you know. All right, this move is interesting. They're moving um, into Eastern Elven Wheel. I don't know where that army is going. They have really nicely consolidated in East Rune. This is a great um, example of what happens when you get an early um, Many Kings because you can put two units in North Rune, two units in South Rune, and then you have this beautiful 10-unit um, army. So, um, you know, I feel good about Dane Ironfoot's Guard and Erebor. I feel reasonably good about Woodland Realm. And if I can get Gimli, um, you know, either up to Woodland Realm or up to Erebor, that could be great. So, um and maybe even I could take I could put Legolas up there um, if I have if I have the moves to do it. So um, yeah, this is this is an interesting situation for me, um, and I don't I don't really know where this army is going. Um, I would have kind of expected North Athelion to take out Gondor, but um, especially and this is sort of the drawback of bringing Gan uh, Strider out early. Um, you know, I need to get to Minas Tirith to crown him, but if Minas Tirith comes under siege, then that's a lot harder. If I get, um, if I get dead men or something like that, I feel like I can still get him down here and probably crown him. Um, but I need to, I need to be thinking about that and get that done soon. All right. So, um, okay. I draw a power to great. I have two of these blue tiles. Um, I think I end up discarding a blue tile. No. All right. I discard axe and bow. I think that makes sense. And then my opponent draws Corsairs, very nice and grand. So that is a great draw, especially with, um, Southrons and Easterlings already at war and, uh, elves not at war. So this, I feel like points to an early attack on Gondor. They allocate one eye, roll two more. Um, and then I get one movement and a Palantir. So there are four eyes. I think I'm going to be pretty happy to lose Gandalf if I can. I move once, but I get missed. So, you know, that's good. Again, I was in another situation where I could um, potentially um, have gotten Strider down to Minas Tirith if I used um, a ring and didn't move the Fellowship at all. But I again, I preferred sort of to kill off Gandalf. Now, um Maybe, I think this might have been a slight inaccuracy. Maybe I should have just uh, used the Palantir first so that I could have um, cycled a card with Gandalf in case Gandalf did die there. So that might have been a mi minor inaccuracy. All right. My opponent musters more into Orthanc and then moves um, into Western Emin Wheel. And then uh, I try and pass, but I can't. And I move armies. I guess they're going for Helm's Deep. And I get Minas Tirith prepared. And and then they draw a card. Uh, no, okay. No, that was a misplay. They, that was a misclick. They didn't mean to. Um, right. So, yeah, that was just a misclick. They play... Um, they play Black Captain Commands. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. They move... Uh, what did we misplay that they just played that as ring rates are abroad so maybe we're having a weird um card error situation did they really have corsairs they really have grand i mean i think these are the cards they had uh, are these the cards that i had yeah these look like the cards that i had so I don't know what's going on. So I think we just misplayed that. That that was supposed... We treated that as ring wraiths are abroad is what just happened there. Um, I don't know how much better it was for that to happen for them as opposed to getting two extra Nazgul and Eastamnet. I don't know. Um, 
okay, I use that will of the West to get my armies in position because I don't have scouts anymore. I'm worried that that army is going to really get annihilated. I mean, you could really lose a lot of hit points there and I want to make sure Helm's Deep can hold out as long as possible. I do have Ents in hand. So, um, yeah, if I can get Gandalf and Fangorn, then it'll make Orthanc hard to empty or costly to empty. So I don't know, maybe it would have been better to move again. I think that since I have one movement and I'm sort of playing a military game, um, I'm happy for the fellowship to declare in Lorien and maybe heal twice. And that's why I didn't want to move again against four eyes. So I think it's probably okay to use that as a military defense instead of pushing the fellowship. Um, you know, if you do separate a bunch of companions early, then you have to be prepared to defend your strongholds to make it hard for a shadow. Um, all right, so they continue to move in to Westamnet and get their armies ready um, to come in as Corsairs. And then I play Elven Rope to cycle uh, another character card and I get um, Great Company. Maybe it would have been better to um, play Power Too Great. I think I was... Um, I don't know why I was cycling character cards instead of strategy cards. I think that I wanted to like keep power too great as a surprise, I guess. I'm not sure. I guess, yeah. All right. They attack into Helm's Deep. And now Rohan is one away from war. And we go on to next round. So I do draw into Thrandall's Archers. I'm very happy to see that. That's great. And... Um, Guahir is not quite enough movement from Gladden Fields. So it's one, two, three, four to Druidan Forest, but it doesn't get me all the way to Minas Tirith. So um, it does let me move a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and maybe I should, I think I end up discarding it. No, okay, I save it. So I got rid of Last Battle. That's interesting. I feel like Last Battle is a pretty powerful combat effect uh, for Daylight. I guess I want to save Gua here for movement in case I roll a bunch of Palantirs here. I can get Strider down to Minas Tirith more easily. Uh, Shadow allocates one eye, rolls one, and I get another very nice, um, very nice roll here. So um, I declared into Lorien, I healed one corruption, and then I get this nice roll. And this is going to let me um, get um, Strider, right? This is exactly what I need. I, I mean, Aragorn. I need two movement, two um, companion movement, and a Will of the West. So yeah, that worked out really well. I've been getting good rolls. I think they are also getting good rolls. Um, these, are, these are pretty nice rolls. So they're attacking into Fords, and the unit goes bye-bye. And that was a minor inaccuracy. So um, by attacking into Fords there, they actually put Rohan to war. And now I have this one muster die that I can use. I mean, I, these other three dice, the the two character dice in the Will of the West, are sort of spoken for already to get, to get Aragorn. But that one muster, I don't know exactly what I would have done with it. Uh, productively and so this is a very productive use of a muster it can certainly like it's not going to stop the attack in Rohan but it makes it a little harder and they would have been able to much more efficiently take over it so you know um, I didn't mention this before but um, we were, were like six time zones apart and so this was starting this game was starting at 11 30 p.m for me and like 5 30 a.m for them and so we're both sort of a little tired at various points um and we played this over four sessions because it was such a ridiculously long game all right um and i realize i'm only on turn five so i better <laughs> i better speed up my commentary all right so they start moving armies in and then um they get umbar ready and then um Let's see, they attack into Edoras and they take out Edoras. And then I start getting my companions in position. I send Gimli up to um, the north. I send Legolas to Lorien. And now, now that I'm thinking about it more, maybe it's a mistake. Um, but I, I think that Lorien is often a target. So putting a companion there, especially when you have the fellowship there, and I kind of want them to be safe there for a while, um, you know, it's kind of an, I think a, a good place to defend, to shore up defenses a little bit. Um, 
it definitely seems like Dew is going to get attacked. So having some additional companion up there is good too. All right. And then with this, they play Ring Wraiths or Abroad and attack Erebor. So that's fine. Um, not so different than Black Captain Commands. Okay. And then Dwarves are one away from war now. But I'm happy with my defense of Erebor. I move companions again. Gimli doesn't make it to Erebor, but does get into Woodland Realm at least. And... Um, then I get uh, Aragorn, which is nice. Turn five, you know, a little late. But if the game goes really long, <laughs> then that's a lot of extra dice. Uh, all right. So they mustered into North Rune. And, um, and then let's see. They muster again into North Rune. So they're planning on just taking over Dew and um, using those musters productively. All right. So um, now that I have Boromir in Minas Tirith, I can start uh, using Boromir's ability to muster Gondor. I don't know that they already have Corsairs, um, which is obviously not good for me, but all right, I, now I draw We Prove the Swifter. So one turn too late, I draw We Prove the Swifter. That would have saved me a single die because I could have moved all the way from Dimmerald Dale to Minas Tirith. But I kind of like that I get um, Legolas into Lorien and Gimli into Woodland Realm or Erebor um, because... You know, it's uh, it's nice to defend those strongholds too. So I, I don't know if it actually really cost cost me anything. All right, um, what do I discard? Let's see. I go out here and we prove the Swifter. Okay, so I don't want to cancel um, their cards, and I and I got rid of all of my Fellowship movement stuff because they're kind of where they are need to be. The Dark Candles of Corpses and Rage. I think Rage is always a good one, particularly. Um, in combination with uh, New Powers Rising, if they draw that at some point. All right, so um, they allocate one eye, roll two more, and now I get this nice roll. Um, I declared the Fellowship again, so now they're down to zero corruption, and now I can go. Um, I can go about moving, um, moving and trying to kill off Gandalf. So I start by passing because no reason to declare well, you know, what my plans are. They play Fighting Urkai. Obviously, that's a great use of a Palantir, very efficient. Um, and though this army is powerful, it's going to be tough, I think, for me to defend that. We'll see. I do have um, Nameless Wood, which is two extra hits. Um, we'll see how it goes. I don't actually remember exactly the, the details. They, they play Rage for Relentless Assault. Okay, you know, it's always nice to play that round one of a of Fighting Archive because you know I don't have Daylight or something like that. So um, they lose two and they get um, only two hits. That's definitely below average. Um, and I get two hits back, but still two hits, making progress. And now um, they play a character card and I'm worried that they're playing something like um, Dread and Despair. And so I save my end card um, I go ahead and play Shield Wall, I think. We'll see. Yeah, all right. So they did play Dread and Spare. Um, I play Shield Wall. So I did actually read that in advance. I remember a thing about that. Um, maybe it's not worth it to play Shield Wall here, but even with Dread and Despair, um, you know, they have decent chances of getting a lot of hits and, or not a lot, but two hits. And I want to, you know, try and prevent that. I could, I was tempted to play No Quarter instead, but um, I still am thinking about using this to defend um, an Elven Stronghold at some point. So, all right. Um, they forfeit three and roll three sixes on um, eight dice, which is obviously really good um, for them. Glad I played Shield Wall. And I get no hits on my four dice. So, you know, not great for me. Sort of making this much less likely. We're on round three of the combat. I play my Ents here because I don't know if I'm going to get Gandalf. And even if I do, they can muster up an Orthanc. And I'd like to try and slow them down here. It Maybe this is a mistake. I feel like my hand is pretty full. I have Grey Company that can um, refill my strategy card. So yeah, I play it here. Maybe it's a mistake. They get no hits. I get one hit, but two extras from the end. So I get three hits. And, um, and then they stop. So, you know, I don't know that this army, this three regulars and two uh, leaders is going to hold, but at least it's slowing them down in Helm's Deep. All right. I move and um, 
they roll. I say that I should have moved instead of passing. Um, yeah, I guess the the benefit there is I know if I have Gandalf or not. Like right now, I don't know if I'm going to get Gandalf, so I don't know about that Ant card if it's worth saving to try and play uh, as the card effect. I guess that's what I'm thinking. All right, they do hit me and they draw an eye. So I don't want to be revealed again. It would have been nice, really nice to be able to hang out in Lorien. Not that I would, not that the... I would keep declaring in Lorien, but just you're protected in Lorien um, from a bunch of cards. But I'm revealed, and um, there's just been a lot of reveals for the Fellowship, and I whine about it a little bit. And um, But I do kill off Gandalf to a one. So I would have been very happy to see a three there, but still, uh, a one is not bad. I have a Will of the West. I'm going to get um, my sixth die, or my sixth die uh, starting on turn seven. I- I'm, you know, still... All right, so um, let's see. Pippin becomes guide. There's more mustering in Orthanc. I get Gandalf. Even more mustering in Orthanc and more in North Rune. And then um, I muster Gondor towards war because I'm afraid of Corsairs. I want to get ahead of that, I guess. Um, they muster again into North Rune. And I now have Gondor at war. And then I would think, yeah, so this is interesting. So they didn't play Corsairs here. I did not realize at the time that they had Corsairs of Umbar in their hand. I think I think that that is, you know, I would say probably a mistake. Because now I'm going to get to muster into Dol Amroth. And um, if Corsairs were played instead, then I wouldn't get to muster into Dol Amroth. So um, maybe their thinking is they're worried about my military victory. If I have all these companions all over the place, Dol Golder is totally open. I can get elves to war guaranteed using Legolas's ability. Um, if you completely vacate Umbar, then this army can build up pretty fast. Um, but still, I probably would have I probably would have gone for it if I were Shadow. All right, um, they attack Helms Deep, and this time they take it out. So, um, in the end, they are left with four regulars. So, you know, it didn't quite hold out, but it did suck, soak up a, a pretty big army and some reinforcements. So, you know, that's not too bad. All right, I get Wisdom of Elrond and Dead Men of Dunharrow. Very happy to see Dead Men of Dunharrow. It's a nice combination um, with Strider, and I'm happy to see six dice. So my plan at this point is just like make steady progress with the fellowship, defend myself well, um, and maybe depending on what, you know, what their strategy is, if they're really focused on hunting the fellowship, then it'll give me opportunities for military victories. So I'm always on the lookout for that. Uh, they allocate one eye, roll two more, and I get, uh, you know, a pretty nice roll. Two, two movement is below average, but enough. I'm only probably planning on moving once per round. Um, so, uh, I, what do I do first? I think that, uh, let's see what I do. I muster another elite into Dol Amroth. Now, I guess my thinking is maybe they top decked Corsairs of Umbar. I might as well muster there. Um, they already had it in hand, but clearly this was still a good choice. Uh, so that's good. And then they get their armies set up they have dale very well defended and um i hide the fellowship they relocate the witch king into dale i start mustering leaders and regular so a leader in dol amroth and a regular in minas tirith they are mustering in dol golder and moria so you know I don't know that they need to be quite that defensive, but you know, it's good not to leave completely open um, strongholds. If I had, if the elves get to war, it makes me think they're planning on putting the elves to war. And then um, if the elves are at war and I have um, through a day and a night, then at the end of the round, I can use through a day and a night, go to South Andrew and Vale, and then just sort of walk into Dol Golder. So um, yeah, I don't, I mean, they're at four victory points now. So Okay, I muster even more into uh, Minas Tirith and Dol Amroth. And um, though I'm tempted to play Grey Company, um, I have a lot of cards in hand right now. 
and I, I'm sort of low on the Gondorian elites. Um, I'm tempted to maybe try and go and recapture Rohan and then, and then try and use this Rohan, um, Rohan force pool a bit. So, uh, all right. So they're moving armies around and, um, okay. So they sort of just put some into West Rondor. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing here. Um, I guess they're just planning on staying in Umbar and maybe eventually coming up to Minas Tirith with some regulars. I don't know. I play Thrandall's Archers here because I didn't know exactly what else to play. Could have played Power Too Great. Maybe maybe that was the better choice. It's just they were at six cards, and I didn't want to give them an easy opportunity to get rid of it. Um, and I redraw into um, Faramir's Rangers, which is certainly a nice card to have. All right. Um, they get Hill Trolls in... Uh, minus Morgul. Again, they're playing quite defensively. I don't know that I would use Hill Trolls there. Did they have something else useful to do? Um, yeah, maybe not that useful. If they had gotten, uh, you know, the Witch King onto the Woodland Realm, they could have played Grand. If they had gotten the Witch King to Erebor, they could have played Grand. So I might have tried to plan for that. Uh, all right. And then I moved the Fellowship once because that's a good thing to do slow and steady you know they're rolling four dice but they're only hitting on sixes so um and they miss and i think it's pretty close to 50 50 there so uh that's a nice bit of luck all right i um they're back again separate from the fellowship okay so they're back again does allow you to separate that's four cards in the character deck that lets you separate companions uh with a palantir die all right, they get Balrog and um, they kill Return to Valinor. I'm a little surprised by that. I feel like that's obviously a almost useless uh, card effect, but it's a very powerful combat effect. Um, I kill there and back again. I get rid of there and back again. And then what? what's the other card that you'd get rid of here? Um, this was a really hard choice for me. Um, I like Path of the Woes. Anyway, you can decide what you would pick. Um, I won't spend too long uh, analyzing in advance, I guess. Uh, so I ended up discarding Wisdom of Elrond. Um, I really like Confusion. It's a great combat effect, but um, I just like all these other ones better. Um, Swords and Ariad Ariador also lets me cycle into more strategy cards. So, um, all right. I declare the Fellowship into Eastamnet, and they allocate one eye, roll two more, and then I get this beautiful roll, very flexible, uh, just great roll. I'm getting good rolls. I, you know, do they want three eyes? Maybe so, maybe not. I don't know. It's This is not the best roll for them. They only got two attacks and they really would expect four. I mean, they got three attacks and they would expect four. They're probably getting a little too much mustering, but all right. I start by uh, playing Swords and Ariador because um, the North is at war. Um, maybe someday these guys will do something. I don't know. Um, what else am I going to do with that muster? Um Maybe I could have saved it if I'm going to bring up um, Aragorn up to um, fold and re try and recapture Rohan some, then maybe I could have saved it from mustering up there. I don't know. Uh, okay, Shadow moves on to the Fellowship. That's clever. And then they move this army into South Athelion. And so, of course, I play Faramir's Rangers. Nice timing for that. I use the Will of the West here because I just don't want to give them a chance to use Day Without Dawn, I guess. And Faramir misses, but I'm happy to have the Elite and the Leader there. They muster more into Minus Morgul. Um, I start mustering into Erebor, into Ered Luin, thinking that these armies are going to merge up. And um, astute uh, watchers may notice something about that. And... Uh, then they muster into Mount Gundabad and Baradur. They're playing defensively here, but I don't know. Is there something really urgent they need to do with those musters? Okay. And I muster again a regular a leader into Erdluin and a leader into the Shire. Like this is this gets pretty big pretty fast. Um, you know, right here, especially with North Downs, I can come after Mount Gundabad, I can come after Moria. If I'm moving the fellowship once per turn and otherwise just stirring up trouble, like there are certainly places that I can go. And probably this army in, um, in Minas Tirith plus Osgiliath could take out something here in Mordor. They probably can't hold all three of those. 
So, you know, again, it can be uh, shadow could race. Um, instead of shadow defending, they could just race to get 10 victory points before I get four if they're worried about the military victory. But it's also not bad to defend if you don't think you can win the race. You're definitely going to win the long game eventually if things go slow enough. All right, they play Monsters Roused. Uh, certainly not crazy. Uh, elves are not at war at all, nowhere close to war. Uh, so, all right. And then um, I move the Fellowship once because that's what you do once per turn. And they get missed again. Um, and then I realize something that you all may have noticed, which is that the dwarves are not actually at war. Uh, so you can't muster them in Eridluin if they're not at war. Uh, so we just took it back and instead we said, okay, I mustered a regular into Minas Tirith and then an elite into Minas Tirith. And we all said, okay, that was okay. So, um, you know, not great to make rules mistakes, but, um, it's probably the least impactful change, and we, we both felt okay with it. So, um, okay, so we moved on. They muster uh, into Umbar and into Minus Morgul a little more. And then I start moving with um, Strider into um, into Rohan. And my thinking is I have Path of the Woses, so I can bring this army back if I need to. I have Dead Men of Dunharrow. So for a lot of reasons, and I have this big um, force pool in Rohan, and I only have three regulars left in the Gondorian force pool, which is exactly what you happen to get with Dead Men of Dunharrow. So um, I'm basically done mustering Gondor. There's literally, I don't have any leaders left to muster. Um, and these three regulars I'm going to get um, with Dead Men of Dunharrow. So I have nothing else to muster in Gondor. I need to uh, go somewhere else to be able to make use of my um, musters and look at this beautiful Rohan force pool. All right, so um, Shadow moves uh, Nazgul around and they're relocating to attack uh, Gondor, which I think makes sense if you see that Strider or Aragorn and Boromir are leaving. It actually does leave Minas Tirith quite a bit weaker. So... Um, I draw into through day and a night. Obviously, I'm going to discard wizard staff. Um, and they get rid of Balrog at this point. Okay. Um, if they're not planning on attacking Lorien, that makes total sense. And I declare the, the fellowship into Druden Forest anyway, um, because I don't want to let them play uh, cards that require the fellowship to be one or higher. They allocate one eye, roll one more. And then I get a nice roll, but very limited mustering here. So my plan was, I was going to move the fellowship once. I was going to um, attack fold. I was going to muster up, um, but I only get this one muster. So, all right. Um, I attack into fold, uh, take no damage. They retreat into Westham net. I guess they're worried about me retaking Helm's Deep or they're just trying to slow me down, but they're moving towards um, Gondor here. And then I muster a regular into um, fold and a regular into the Shire because why not? Maybe that army is going to do something someday uh, because my plan is I'm going to play Grey Company. So I'm happy to have that regular there. I want to use up the Rohan force pool, but um, I'm happy to have a regular there that I can promote into a leader. I mean, into an elite and then just draw more cards with Grey Company. So that's my plan. Um, they attack into us Gilead. I, um, what do I play here? Uh, maybe I play shield wall. Yeah. So I think it makes sense to play shield wall. I want to just make sure this elite survives. Um, they, uh, get only one hit. I get one hit back and, oh, did they get no hits? Uh, they're terrible. Yeah. So I guess they got they got no hits. That was unlucky. All right. And um, but they get to cycle a card. Warner Saren Toil, obviously not use not useful when there are no um, higher level companions left. So um well, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I need to be a little careful that this big army doesn't come and kill off Aragorn. I think it's relatively unlikely, but um, you know, it's a risk. They muster more into Orthanc. I play Grey Company here. And that's why I did play a card before, um, because I knew I was going to be getting more cards from Grey Company. So I get my Elite there, 
and um, I draw into these elven reinforcement cards, which I'm happy to have because um, elves are not a war. So um, Shadow attacks into Minas Tirith, and I just go into Siege and get one regular back into my force pool and um, then I move the fellowship once I need to keep making progress they miss and um, and then they play an school strike and um, they still manage to miss so on five so it's definitely definitely bad um, rolling uh, on hunts there near near getting towards Mordor and um, I play Celeborn's glad dream I think that um, Lorien is a more likely target than um, Rivendell, even with what's going on here. And I'm still thinking about possible military victory, so building up this Lorien army is is a good thing. And I still have power to great, so if they start to build up something towards Rivendell, I may have time to, to muster. And since I have Legolas in Lorien, I can use any die to muster the elves towards war. So I know regardless of my role, I'll be able to get them to war if I ever want to. All right. Um... Shadow plays Grand here, and um, I think that's a nice play. Good to take out Minas Tirith if you can. They want to take it back, and instead they draw a strategy card so that they have the most options when considering what to play. And then they... Um, all right, so I attack into Edoras here. I, I could have maybe moved the Fellowship again. I guess my thinking is I'm not in a huge rush. Um, I can move twice next round, uh, and that's probably fine. So, yeah, I just attack into Edoras because I want to uh, be prepared to muster more, and I want to just continue to keep Shadow Victory points a bit lower. Uh, I get one hit, they get none back, so there we go. And then they play Grand, and they get a bunch of sixes. Uh, I get four back. And um, I play King Brandsman for the combat effect because I have too many cards. And then um, let's see. Do they manage to take it out in one combat? Uh, yes. So they with Grand, they manage to take out Minas Tirith. They have four regulars left after that. All right. Um, I draw a Book of Mazarbal at this point, not as useful because Erebor is um, besieged and I don't really need to move companions around very much. Um, happy to see Athalos, very useful combat effect and card effect. So um, I discard Book of Mazarbal, I declare into Osgiliath, and I just need two movement to get into Mordor. Uh, you know, the Fellowship is doing okay. Um, you know, I think this is the benefit of sort of moving slowly. I've really only moved against sixes every round. And because Shadow played kind of defensively in response to my um, military uh, presence, um, I actually have time to be moving the Fellowship slowly. They allocate one eye, roll none, which is great for me because now I can, you know, safely move in. Um, and I roll zero movement, zero on six dice. That is uh, very low chances, like 2%, right? One out of 64. So um, even with a ring, I'm not going to be able to get into Mordor this round. And the Fellowship, I mean, the Shadow Military is going slowly, but like not that slowly. So, um, and I only rolled one attack. So I can't even like be making a lot of progress here. I'm sure glad I have, um, you know, a potentially productive things to do do with these musters. But all right, so let's see what happens. Um, I start by moving the fellowship with a ring because why? I don't exactly know. Um, maybe if I'm getting hit, I want to be able to put my hobbit somewhere like Pilar gear. Maybe um, it's a mistake. Um, or maybe I guess I don't want them to uh, get a reroll by moving on to its Goliath. All right. So I decide to move anyway, because I want to keep making progress. Um, they miss and, um, play Horde from the East in, uh, 
Inconned. Yes, Inconned. We decided, <laughs> I mentioned it and I was like, oh, you should play it in Con. So they played it in Con because they're going to use it to come take over Gondor, which is, which is cool. All right. It's nice to see the uh, Horde from the East played in Con. You don't, don't usually see that. All right. Though functionally is the same as Far Harad. All right, they move armies around. Um, they get this army into Fords of Eisen so that I guess maybe they can reinforce Helm's Deep more. Um, they're still scared of a military victory for me. All right, they get their armies geared up and they're just going to march into um, Dol Amroth the hard way. I muster in, uh, regulars into Edoras and Shire and then Pelargir gets attacked. And I retreat to Osgiliath. I don't know where else. I mean, I feel like um, Dol Amroth is already pretty full. So might as well just sit in Osgiliath. Um, I do have Path of the Woeses. So I'm thinking about like, if they really get like deep into Gondor, um, this army can teleport back to Osgiliath using, um, using Path of the Woeses. So it's a little weird that I like vacated Minas Tirith just to go to Rohan just to come back, but it did let me free these um, settlements so that I could start mustering up again, which when you get a roll like this, it's useful to be able to muster. All right, um, muster more into the Shire and um, Edoras. Uh, they take over Lasarnach and move to Lamadon. I don't know exactly why they leave two in Pilar gear, but okay. And um, I muster an elite into Edoras. This is now a really awesome army and I can do a lot of things with it. And um, they draw a character card. I guess they're just, um, you know, they want to keep the fellowship down, I guess. And um, I attack into Westamnet. I guess my plan is, depending on how fast Shadow Military is going, either I can go into Helm's Deep and try and retake it, or I can go for, um, you know, military attack and Orthanc, or I could go up to Dole Golder. A um, lot of options. Or, like, jump back to Osgiliath and then go into Mordor. I am, I'm thinking about Path of the Woeses. I want to keep that as an option, but I know because I have a unit in Osgiliath, they can't take over both Druid and Forest and Osgiliath in a single action. So Path of the Woeses is still open. All right. Um, I attack into uh, Westamnet. They finally get a hit against me, which is fine. I don't leave anybody behind. They play New Powers Rising. Obviously, don't love to see that, but so be it. And um, then I play Kindred of Glorfindel. I don't think that Rivendell is going to get attacked, but it is nice to be able to get all these Elven strongholds mustered up. Um, they don't seem to be trying to attack there. Um, I guess if you're going for um, Dol Amroth, then it's nice not to have um, Elves at War for Cairdon ships. But uh, at this point, this army in Dol Amroth is pretty decent. All right. Um... They play the ring is mine. I have a bunch of cards um, and have to discard some, but that's how it goes. All right, so I discard help unlooked for and Grimbjorn. Obviously, scouts is a great effect, but um, I don't anticipate needing it that much, like maybe in Osgiliath. But okay, so I get to North Athelion. Obviously, I wanted to be in Mordor, but that's how it goes. And um, they allocate one, roll another, and then I get this very nice roll, assuming they don't have uh, Day Without Dawn. So obviously I'm going to spend one and I attack into Helm's Deep before this regular gets to get in. And even if this army is coming out of Orthanc to help Helm's Deep, if I attack right now, I'll have one attack before this army comes in. So, um, you know, if I can take back some victory points and slow down Shadow while keeping some progress with the Fellowship, that's good. I still have, um, you know, two companions in there and I'm at zero corruption. So, uh, all right, they move Nazgul around and then I attack into Helm's Deep using another Will of the West. Happy to see they don't have Day Without Dawn or if they did, yeah, they don't have it. Um, and I attack into Helm's Deep. I decide to play Athelos because um, two automatic hits on sixes is pretty nice and I don't want to have to reduce a lot of these elites to be able to take it back. I just want to take it back with as few casualties as possible. So I play Andril. They don't play a card. I get two automatic hits, and I roll two other sixes. 
Um, so that's four hits, two of which were automatic, but still four hits on the first round of combat. I take out all these orcs in a single attack and they uh, get none back. So this is the way you take back Helm's Deep. Uh, well done, Aragorn, Bormir. Uh, just beautiful job. All right, so I've retaken that. And now, um, because there were so there were no casualties there, I still have a really sizable army here. I can do cool things with Path of the Woeses. I also still have Dead Men of Dunharrow. So a lot of good things there. All right. Um, and Shadow is now back down to four victory points. All right. Shadow besieges Dol Amroth and um, gets some armies ready. Um, and... I use my character card here because my plan is I'm going to wait until the end to be able to um, move in and see see what happens. So um, happy to see Bilbo Song at this point. It's a good um, uh, fellowship defense. They attack into Dol Amroth and um, they play Foul Thing. They get no hits against me, but I get two hits against them. And uh, let's see, I muster into the Shire, get some good Hobbit armies going on. I play Path of the Woeses here. So I guess my thinking is they've sort of um, committed some to Gondor, uh, Umbar minus Morgul. And Bardur are all weaker. I can stir up trouble going for a military victory. And or I can um, attack into Minas Tirith. Um, it's a little silly to have marched an army all the way here and then come back. But all right. I bring just Boromir. I sort of split this army in half is what I just did. And I leave Aragorn here because I have dead men of Dunharrow. So... Um, and they're taking actions before me because I used my token. So that was a use sort of an example of how to use the token to get the tempo. They see that I'm going to get into Mordor. So they play Shelob's Lair, um, knowing that they still have Foul Thing potentially to stall me. And they sort of already decided they're willing to use a ring. So this is a key moment. Um, action tokens give free people the tempo. If I move now, then I... I open up the possibility of them playing Cruel Weather, playing uh, Nazgul Search. They've already played Nazgul Strike, but Nazgul Search and revealing me automatically. If I wait until my last action, then it's impossible for them to play Cruel Weather or Nazgul Search because on their last action, the Fellowship is at zero movement. Um, but... Uh, it does open me up to the possibility of um, something like Foul Thing, which you can see in here, um, there are three tiles that would reveal me. Now, this too does not actually reveal me because um, I can use these guide abilities for the two hobbits. And then Gollum is guide, and then the two reveal doesn't actually reveal me. But these one reveals will reveal me because I can only lose one hobbit, and then I'll still have to be revealed. So, um, and on top of that, if, it, if they have Isildur's Bane, then I can't lose any hobbits at all. And, and then the two or either of the one reveals would reveal me. So think, would you in this case risk um, a, you know, either two out of, what is that, 12? So, so a two out of 12 chance, one sixth chance of getting revealed by, installed by something like Foul Thing or Orc Patrol um, a three out of 12 chance if they have Isildur's Bane, um, but being a hundred percent safe from cruel weather. So what I decided was to play dead men of Dunharrow here, take out these units in Pilar gear, muster my three Gondorian units, and now have a really sizable Gondor army again, while still defending, basically Rohan should be able to still defend itself a bit. Um, and I risked the the hunt pool. Um, I think at the moment I wasn't thinking of Isildur's Bane, um, making this two also a, a stall card, a stall tile. Um, upon reflection, I think that I should have just moved once and risked the possibility of cruel weather, in which case I just move again. Um, so yeah, 
I don't know. Um, I ended up risking this because I just felt like, you know, the odds are pretty good. I also thought instead of playing Dead Men of Dunhera, I could have separated one Hobbit, which then would have made me completely safe from Foul Thing or Orc Patrol stalling me. But I didn't want to give up a die and a corruption um, just to protect myself from a, a, you know, effectively one out of six or two out of 12 chance. So anyway, they use a ring, they play Foul Thing, um, and then... Uh, they draw one. So that was precisely the tile they needed. Uh, I lose a uh, hobbit and then I get revealed. And now I've used my last token and I can't get into Mordor. So this was two turns in a row where I probably should have been in Mordor. The last round was sort of just the luck of the dice. Um, but this round was totally my choice um, to risk it. And... Um, I don't know. I don't know if that was the right choice or not. It was certainly an interesting choice. And this is what I love about the action tokens. Um, they gave me some protection from crew weather, which is which was very interesting, but they sort of subjected me to risk from foul thing. And um, I just think that's really cool. It's a, it's a, it's a nice design. Um, and now it's sort of sinking in. Oh, I didn't get into Mordor. Next round, I'm going to have to move twice anyway in case they have cruel weather because then I won't know in advance. So it's just, it's just like a, I, I was doing so well with the fellowship and then I just, I just messed this up. So um, I, I'd be curious to hear if other people would have risked it or not. But I, I think upon reflection, it was, it was definitely the wrong risk um at this point in the game given how everything was going so um all right so i hide and that's how it goes i draw smeagol helps nice master very happy to see that and uh that's that's a great you know second best blue tile uh very good uh power of tom bombadil not particularly useful but could be good for the combat effect great roll this is just a very good roll exactly what i need um, but, uh, I rolled too soon. <laughs> so shadow should roll first. They need to allocate eyes. We can't, can't use that. All right. So they, uh, allocate one, oh, they allocate zero eyes. Yeah. So they allocate zero eyes because, um, I didn't move last round, so they don't have to. Uh, so they allocate zero eyes. They roll one and, um, now, I roll again. Did I just get the same roll? Did I literally roll the same thing? No, I have one fewer Will of the West. It's almost the exact same roll that I rolled before, but uh, one Will of the West turned into a muster, which can almost sometimes be a good thing if you're not, if you're going to muster anyway and you're not worried about, you don't want to worry about Day Without Dawn. All right, so um, we now have to reload again. It's another day. So we've been taking a lot of breaks. All right, so I muster a regular into Pilar Gear and then I muster my last Rohan regular into, um, or my second to last Rohan regular into Helm's Deep. So, you know, I think this is a good example of what free people can do when they've sort of committed to a military strategy, but they're still also making progress with the fellowship. Um, you are like threatening military victories, um, but also you can choose to just recapture your own strongholds and, and give the fellowship time. So because uh, Shadow... Um, you know, didn't have that great luck with the hunt as the fellowship made slow but steady progress. Um, I was able to really keep the hope of the ring victory alive. Um, also, I think because Shadow has not been playing super aggressively, um, I'm not at great risk of them getting to 10 victory points too soon. So... All right. So here's the role. I mustered into Pilar Gear, mustered into... Um, Helm's Deep because I want to be able to be prepared for these armies coming in. Uh, they muster an elite into South Dunland. I muster my regular into Helm's Deep and a leader, I mean a leader into Helm's Deep, a leader into the Shire. Uh, they now get their armies going toward um, Helm's Deep and I move the fellowship once. They get missed and um, now we have a very nice full army by shadow into Fords of Eisen. And there's really not much more I can do about it. Um, I get one extra leader in there and another leader in the Shire. 
and um, now Helm's Deep goes under siege again. So, um, you know, I don't know that this is going to be able to hold. If I had gotten Gandalf in there and played Heroic Death or something like that, maybe I could. Um, but you don't really want to put Gandalf up against um, up against Wargs. Maybe I should have left Boromir up there as a as a companion to be able to defend that better. Um, you know, Heroic Death is very powerful if you can soak up two hit points with it. And um, having a captain in the battle is good. I wanted him down in Gondor to be able to threaten military stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, se- it certainly seemed like Helm's Deep would be a target at some point. All right. Uh, Nazgul show up and um, they attack into Helm's Deep. I had a nice play of advantageous position against Devil Rhea Vorthank. And um, I don't remember exactly what happens. But uh, I play a bunch of combat cards and uh, yeah, so I guess that um, that army held relatively well. I'm just looking, maybe I went too fast in the combat. Yeah, oh, I see. On the last round of combat, they got zero hits and I got four hits. So, you know, luck going my way there. Um I got three plus one with power two great. So I finally decided to play power two great for the combat effect because I just wanted to try and whittle that army down. Um, all right. Um, they hit me on there. So I had to move a second time to be defended against cruel weather. As it turns out, um, they didn't have cruel weather, but I didn't want to risk getting stalled outside of Mordor again. Uh, so, um, I had to move and this time they don't reveal me, but there's a three. So, um, the Hobbit goes to, um, East of net. Mary goes to East of net. I take two corruption, which part of me is like, well, it, you know, obviously don't want to take corruption, but having a little bit of corruption in case I draw an early blue tile that heals me, it could be, you know, not so bad. All right. Now Gollum is there and they don't have any card to mess with me. They don't have Nazgul search or, um, another tile drawing card right now. So the fellowship actually makes it in to Mordor finally turn 12 without, um, at the end of turn 12, start of turn 13 without getting revealed and without getting an extra stronghold tile. So, so that is nice. All right. Ulug high show up, um, in Helm's deep. I think that makes sense. And, um, we go on fellowship is in Mordor. This hunt pool I'd say is, reasonably friendly uh you know i don't like the red tiles but it's a pretty big pool and um you know it's not it's not great but i do have golem i can go slowly all of these all of these tiles the threes the twos the ones even shelob like i can reveal using golem's ability and reduce the corruption by one so that could easily be sort of two or three maybe even four corruption saved as long as i manage to dodge the eyes um all right, they allocate one eye and they roll zero. And so this is always nice when there, are, you know, there are five eyes in the pool. These are now all one reveals. And a one reveal at this point is great. Like I'm happy to make progress. As long as it's not the red eye, I'm happy to make progress and take one one damage and be revealed. I don't care about the reveal because I have enough time. All right, um, I get a very nice roll. Um, nice and flexible, can do what I want with it. And... Um, they're going to get the mouth of Sauron, but okay. So I move the fellowship and it's an eye. Um, great. You know, not as good as a negative two, but I'm very happy to not get a red tile and, um, happy fine to get an eye while it's only one damage. So that's great. So I take one, get revealed. They play Lord of the ring. I take another one that was sort of bound to happen. Um, and, um, I draw a card. I guess, why do I draw a card there and not hide? Uh, I have no idea. I guess I'm thinking I want to keep my options open for military victories. Um, stirring up trouble. Like this is now a serious army in the Shire. I can combine with North Downs pretty quickly. Um, I don't even know. I guess there's one other card. There's lure of the, or there's breaking of the fellowship right? That could hurt me if I'm revealed, but I guess no other card really hurts me. 
because they played everything else. All right. Um, they do play on, on, they went. Okay. I'm not happy to see a third red tile in there. And um, I hide here. I don't know why I passed and then hid, whatever. All right. They draw a character card and, um, and now I move in case they get even more red cards. All right. And um, it's Shelob. So, you know, they were making such nice progress. It was going so well. I would have been okay with an eye for two reveal also. Um, I do have um, Bilbo's song. I now have There's Another Way. At some point, I'm hoping to draw Mithril Coat and Sting. Um, but this is this is not good, right? You obviously don't want to get Shelob. Uh, we'll see how bad it is. Um, it's a two. So a two stop is not so bad, right? This could have been like game ending right here. Um, it could have also been a blue negative two tile. That, that would have been nice. But uh, anyway, two for Shelob. I can live with that. I can reveal using Gollum's ability. Um, so it's only a one reveal. And um, I still have time militarily because I have all these armies all over the place. I can defend. I can probably retake Minas Tirith with this army in um, Osgiliath and Pilar gear. And um, I can also threaten military victories if they don't um, make more military progress more quickly. So um, the mouth shows up and um, Orc Patrol gets played. This is uh, scary, right? This could be this could be a three. This could be a two. Um, and the, and, and, um, I'm revealed with Gollum. So I, I can't even use Gollum's ability to hide again. So this is actually, I think a really smart time to play it. Often you want to wait to play, um, these tile drawing cards until the fellowship is hidden so that you can then reveal them if you get a one or a two. But at this point in the game, I don't really mind being revealed. What I really want is to just not take a bunch of corruption. So, um, this is smart and they get a two. So obviously I would have loved for them to draw a red tile on this one instead of the last one. Um, but this is this is a rough start. It, like the, the eye was fine as the first move, but then getting the Shelob and then the two here um, for Orc Patrol is, is not good. So um, I certainly would have used Gollum's ability to reveal if I could, but I'm already revealed. So up to seven corruption only on step two, definitely not feeling great, but because there are these negative twos and negative ones in the pool, I'm definitely feeling like there's, there's still hope. I just, just less hope now. Um, okay. I do still have time. All right. They attack into Helm's Deep. I play heroic death here because I really want that to live. I don't think, you know, like it might live. Um, I have six hit points. They have nine. Um, so it definitely has chances of living. Um, if I had, a, you know, a companion in there, it would be even better. But they roll three sixes. So obviously not great. And they had played Swarm of Bats, which was a nice play there. Uh, so they roll three sixes. Not happy to see that. And I get only one hit back. So with that, sort of round one is obviously not good. Now I did, you know, it, the previous round of combat, I was... Um, I did get lucky and they didn't get any hit. So, you know, I think overall, probably this combat in Helm's Deep is balancing out, but I was feeling more hopeful before. All right, they press and draw and, um, and then we don't play cards and, um, we remember, we realize that actually there are three victory points. Um, they get two more sixes there. I get only one hit and then, um, they press again and I get one parting hit. So they're back down to four regulars in Helm's Deep and um, back up to five victory points. So, you know, I don't know if I played all that right going all the way up there and then they take Minas Tirith and then I come back down and then they take Helm's Deep. But um, I guess it is slowing them down. And um, now the the you can see how little of a force pool I have left. The Rohan force pool is only a single regular. Um, so the benefit of all of this mustering and, and military action is I am using those resources pretty efficiently. All right. Um, all right. I get an elite in the Shire and uh, they swap some armies around getting prepared to att attack Erebor. I get another elite in the Shire. I don't know exactly how much mustering I should be doing here, but I figure if I muster up a lot, I can, I can really threaten somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but um, with these uh, Gondorian armies and um, 
these guys, I mean, it wouldn't be crazy. I could go take, potentially take Farharad, Angmar, Mount Gundabad. Like, depending on what shadow rolls, uh, I definitely have options. Um, all right, and they muster into Umbar, which I think makes sense. All right, though I guess they hadn't used the mouth yet. Maybe they needed to get armies going around. I don't know. I guess they want to relocate the Witch King up to Erebor. All right, uh, I will go alone. Not so useful at this point. And, uh, I mean, the combat effect could be okay, in, like in um, Woodland Realm, maybe. All right, uh, but I... So I discard scouts. I guess that makes sense. And in some ways, it's maybe nice to have it, but um, I feel like the Daring Defiance could could be used. I do have companions all over the map, so it's possible that'll be useful. They allocate one eye, roll one more, and um, I only get one movement. So, you know, it's not great to be going so slow with the Fellowship. I do have There's Another Way, so I could use that um, potentially. But what I really want to use this, I really want to use this when I'm going to move twice in a round, potentially, where the first one, if you use there as another way, the die does not go into the hunt pool, which means it does not increase the value of eyes rolled. So I don't know if I'm going to end up just hiding and then using a ring, my last ring to move, or if I'm just hiding and that's it and I'm taking it slow and then I'm going to do some military action because I got a lot of, a lot of options here. And I still have through a day and a night that I'm saving. Like this, there's a lot I could do here. All right, so I start by hiding. Um, Shadow relocates Nazgul. And I don't know exactly why the mouth is moving to Westerondor, but okay. And um, armies moving out of Helm's Deep into... Uh, Fords and then West of Net. Oh, I see. They're going to take over. They're going to go take over Edoras. Sure. That makes sense. Um, I guess I was thinking, I was thinking about mustering this last um, regular into Edoras, but um, I was like, ah, it's fine. If they take, if they take Edoras with this army, uh, I'm going to be able to march these guys up and take Helm's Deep. Like I have, I have a bunch of movement and attacks with this. This Palantir can take me from his Giliath all the way to Fold, or to Eastamnet if they don't. You know, if they take over Fold, I can go from his Giliath to Eastamnet, and then I'm only two actions away from Helm's Deep. So, um, also if I want to, I could come up to Dol Guldur and threaten Dol Guldur. There are a lot of things. They didn't roll any musters this round, so. Um, even though I could defend Edoras a little bit more, I, I really want to get my armies moving. This army in the Shire and North Downs could come and take over Moria. I am a little bit worried about Shadows on Misty Mountain because they have not played that yet. And um, and also, yeah, Orcs multiplying again. So the, I, I figure that they end, I think Pits of Mordor they haven't played. Um, the Maybe Pits of Mordor have been, has been played. Uh, let's see. Uh, statistics let's look at um discarded cards have they played um yeah they haven't played pits of mortar so they, they i know that they have quite a few uh, mustering cards available if i go for a military victory so i'm kind of um trying to take it a little slower i think with the fellowship and just um maybe hope the fellowship can still do the job all right they go ahead and play orcs multiplying again and um, I'm thinking I merge up Aragorn and I get this army going from Buckland, uh, from the Shire to Buckland um, with the idea that I can either go up towards North Downs um, or I can go um, towards uh, South Downs. So um, they draw a strategy card at this point. I uh, go ahead and play Bilbo's song here to just sort of temporize and see where um, they're going to move their armies. And um, I'm happy to be back down to five corruption. They attack into Erebor. We're both playing cards. I play Cairdon ships here because the elves are far from war. And um, I, um, I'm happy to try and whittle this army down. Like maybe this army is going to beat Erebor. But what I really don't want is for there to be a super strong army in Erebor that's still available to then come take Woodland Realm. So I want to at least limit them to, to Erebor is my goal. And um, 
Kirtan ships is cool, but I think if I get the elves to war, I'd rather just defend the elven strongholds. Um, all right, so I get two hits pre, which is nice. They get no hits, and then I do one with the dwarves. So they press once, and um, they play Mumakil, which are uh, which can be really good. They get uh, two hits, and I only get one back from the dwarves, so they get three total with Mumakil. That's a great, great play from the elephants. And um, they press again, and they roll three sixes. So that's good. Makes up for round one for them. I get four back, but I don't know that that's going to be enough. So um, they stop at that point, and I only have two regulars left. They're, you know, they've, they've, it, dwarves did decently, you know, not quite as good as I'd hoped, but I think it was probably pretty close to average. And, um, this, this hopefully has weakened them enough that I will be able to, um, hold out Woodland Realm unless they bring a lot more reinforcements. So now I'm thinking, I don't know, where is this army going to go? If they get Erebor and they get, um, Dol Amroth, because I know they haven't played Corsairs of Umbar yet, then they're up to nine points. They could take Pilar gear. That's 10. So I'm, I'm wondering, should I go, you know, with this army in Druid and Forest, should I go on a military attack somewhere or should I go after Helm's Deep again and try and, um, defend it? So, um, all right. So they move armies around. They moved, um, from, a regular from Westamnet to Edoras. They took over Edoras at this point. And from South Dunlin to North Dunlin. I guess they're using these units to come defend Moria. All right. And I move to Eastamnet because I'm not really interested in Edoras. I'm more interested in Helm's Deep. And then this giant army, this giant northern army, look at how beautiful that is, comes after, um, comes after Moria. And then they use a ring to play half orcs and goblin men. No, oh, they undo it. They attack Erebor. All right, so they just attack into Erebor with these regulars, hoping to uh, defeat it. And they play Day Without Dawn here. I'm very happy to see Day Without Dawn gone because I have six dice, and uh, there are certainly times that I might roll. Um, a lot of sixes. Okay. I mean, a lot of, uh, wills All right, they only lose one, um, but they get enough hits. So, uh, they take it out and, um, yeah. Did they remember? Oh, right. I was going to say, did they remember to draw a witch king card? And I just reminded them in game. Good job. Pass self. All right. So they draw the witch king card and they get storm crow, which can be useful. I attack into Westham net and it looks like I'm going to be able to take out Helm's Deep again. They play half orcs and goblin men. I would have been maybe a little tempted to go after trying to defend Helm's Deep some, but all right, that's fine. Um, and now I think with Corsairs, uh, maybe they can take out Dol Amroth. All right, I get some Ents, which I'm happy to see. Guards of the Citadel. And they get um, Shadows Gather, which can be powerful. Allocate one eye. Rolls four. Rolls four eyes. So I am not happy to see that. They have, sorry, they roll five. They just rolled five eyes. My mistake. Um, so that is very scary for the number of eyes. There are four eyes in the Hunt Pool. Four out of 15 not the sort of gamble I want to take to take six in a reveal. That is way too much. Um, I get at least one movement. So that's something. I got way too many musters. So both of us rolled really badly. Um, if I had gotten, you know, more attacks, I could easily have done something with this army. This uh, army in Westamnet could have taken out Helm's Deep. So, um, quite bad rolls for both of us but honestly these six eyes are very scary if they if i pull an eye that's you know i'm up to 11 corruption that's almost certainly game over so um i'm gonna um, I, you know i'm probably gonna have to risk it because i need to keep making some progress and um, i don't want to take an automatic corruption but it's definitely not what i want to see 
All right, so I end up um, mustering elves towards war at this point because what else useful can I do with those musters? Um, and they play Stormcrow. That's funny. So they play Stormcrow to move the elves back because I have companions there. And uh, I lose a, a regular in Grey Havens because um, that will let me reduce elites. Um, and I don't really think the Grey Havens is going to be attacked. And if they do, the dwarves are at war now, so I can reinforce um, Grey Havens anyway. So, all right. I just muster elves towards war again. And uh, then they get some units in Umbar. I get my I get a regular in Westamnet, my the last Rohan regular, and um, I guess I get a regular in the Shire, thinking maybe they're going to come try and get all four cities because they could get Edoras, Pilar, Gairdale, and the Shire. But I think it's relatively unlikely that they'd get all four. But you know why not? Um, my my force pool is seriously seriously depleted. I have no uh, Gondorian units at all of any kind, leaders or regulars or elites. I have nothing in Rohan, and I only have two regulars left of the um, uh, northern pool. So that's pretty good for me. I mean, I feel like when I do that, I'm I'm using my resources to to their fullest. Um, all right, they relocate to Dol Amroth, and um, I got to move the fellowship and drum roll a zero. So, you know, that's obviously really good. Um, if I had gotten, if I'd gotten a one, basically anything other than an I, or, you know, ideally not a three, would have been fine. Um, so there were a lot of good tiles. Obviously, this is the third best tile in the whole pool, um, other than the a negative one and negative two. They got a red tile. I got a blue tile. Okay. Um, feels relatively fair to me. All right. But that's certainly scary. All right. So they play Corsairs. They're attacking Dol Amroth. Um, I'm going to try and hold it. I play my other charge. Um, one hit, but they get, they press. Um, then they got Muma kill. I use through a Dana Knight here because I really want Dol Amroth to hold. Obviously, that's a powerful strategy card really powerful strategy card but i'm sort of thinking hey maybe i can destroy the ring after all i'll go slowly um let's try and hold this so that's my thinking i don't really need day without dawn because um this army is mostly where it wants to be so all right i play it um and uh they roll zero ones and two hits given muma kill and then another six so um, that's three hits and um, I get none. And so that's actually four hits against me. And um, yeah, that was sad. That was sad for Dole Amroth. They get really um, annihilated with that. And um, then they get two more sixes. So, um, you know, Dole Amroth ended up falling really fast with um without putting much putting up much of a defense after all all right edoras i attack because i feel like i'm likely to take helm's deep anyway if i take out edoras then what why they have dale they're going to be able to take pilar gear oh i know why because they're at 10 victory points <laughs> Uh, it's late okay um yeah obviously i don't want them to uh to win the game so uh yeah they're at 10 uh erebor plus dale is three uh minas tirith and um dol dol amroth is uh seven and then helm's deep and edoras is 10 so i had um, i see i i remember now i had hoped to take out helm's deep to be able to um, bring them back two victory points. But um, because I only got a single attack and a single character die, um, and I didn't want to use my last ring uh, to attack militarily, I um, have to just stop them in Edoras. Uh, 
So there was some chance I'm remembering that like they could have used this one regular to possibly take out Polar Gear, in which case I would have had to um, take out Helm's Deep. But because of the way the dice worked out, I think I realized relatively early on that they couldn't um, take out Polar Gear. But yeah, I should have been talking about that. They're, they're now very close to winning militarily, um, but I'm able to uh, stall them winning militarily by um, going and attacking Edris. So um, I get two hits and there we go. I, you have to actually move a unit in to retake it. So I move my regular in, they get, they get one hit back. All right, now they're back down to nine points and um, we move on. So uh, allocate one eye, they roll four more and um, now I get a very nice roll, uh, but I'm very scared to move again because now uh, the hunt pool is um, four eyes out of 14. And, um, you know, I'm just going to have to probably take the gamble again. So um, I start by attacking into Helm's Deep. I don't know. I guess I don't want, I don't want, I have to, I know that I'm going to have to take Helm's Deep this round because clearly they can take Pilar gear. So I'm going to have to defend it or take it. I might as well take it now before they can get any more units into it. And I think I was thinking they still had the move to um, uh, Shadows Gather, though they had already played um, Shadows Gather and Shadow Lengthens. But even this regular, I don't, you know, I don't want to get it in there. I don't want it to get into Helm's Deep. So attack Helm's Deep. Um, they play, give it to us. So maybe it would have been better to move the fellowship first without giving them a chance to play this red tile. But okay. Honestly, in some ways, like give it to us is better than an I, uh, you know, I don't want to get a stop, but I really don't want to get five in a reveal. So I don't even know for sure if this hurts me or helps me. And I think I thought about that at the time and I was like, ah, maybe if they play it, it's not even bad for me because I just don't want to hit a five, five and reveal. Um, I only have four cards left. So I'm hoping to draw into um, Mithracoat and Sting. That would be great. Um, I'm guessing I want to use this Will of the West to draw a card, but I guess we'll see. Um, they've played Day Without Dawn, so I'm not in any rush to, um, to use them now. I know that they're safe. So I attack into Helm's Deep. I play Mighty Attack. Um, the Orc gets no hits. So if anybody would like to know how to retake Helm's Deep twice in one game, taking no casualties and eliminating all Orcs on the first round of combat, automatically Mighty Attack. So uh, this was this was really satisfying <laughs> to just be coming back and forth. I, you know, I don't, I, I still think about it. I don't know if it's the most effective way of doing it. Like maybe I could have put up an even more effective defense because I had all these units, but I certainly think the first time coming back, it was important to get the Rohan reinforcement pool. Maybe um, the Path of the Woes is away wasn't really necessary because I didn't end up taking Minas Tirith. I just like Path of the Woes is to Asgiliath and then marched all the way back to Minas Tirith to retake it. Uh, it's a little a little weird there. So, um, yep, yeah, but okay. Um, so now Shadow is back down to seven victory points. They're clearly going to be able to take Pilar gear. Um, I draw, I do draw a card. I don't get Mithril Coat and Sting. I think if I had drawn Mithril Coat and Sting, which was a 25% chance, I might have used the uh, character die to play it and then a ring to move just to prevent, you know, to minimize the chances that I'm going to um, hit an eye. So um, I get the elves all the way to war now. They attack into Pilar gear. They get a hit. And now all Gondorian units are dead, um, other than the ones that I still have sitting in Helm's Deep. And um, I move the Fellowship because I have to. And, um, drum roll, drum roll, an eye. This is what the hunt pool looks like. A two. So, you know, this is worse than, you know, any of these ones or, um, these, but it's obviously better than, uh, the three stop, any of the stops, or certainly the eyes or the three. So it's a pretty middling tile. 
uh, slightly in my favor, but pretty middling. I'm very happy to dodge the um, the eye. Happy to make progress. I, re- I reveal myself for sure because I have time militarily, I think. And um, they move their armies. And I guess this army is going to come up to Helm's Deep. I don't know exactly where that's going to go. All right. And then I start recruiting a little into Woodland Realm. And um, all right. So why do I do that? Um, I guess I'm thinking that they could go and take the Shire and Dale. I want to be able to threaten to retake Dale. Because I don't think that I can hold Edoras. I don't know. This army seems like it could retake the Shire. So I'm not exactly sure why, why I'm mustering an elite in Woodland Realm. I guess what I'm worried about is if they come take Woodland Realm, then I lose the game and there's no easy way of retaking that. So better to get the elite in there. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, I finally draw Mithril Coat and Sting, which is nice. And... Um, they allocate one eye and they only roll one more. So I'm very happy with two eyes. I mean, one eye would be even better, but two eyes is fine. And I get this great roll, plenty of movement, you know, good situation. So I, um, they start moving armies around. Let's see, you know, they undo. They, I hid and now um, they play little eye. So, so I think this is very clever of them. They put, they put two more, um, dice in there and now eyes are quite scary again um but i just hid so i don't actually have to move again this round um so i play mithril coat and sting and now i have these wills of the west that can probably do useful things all right so they move to druid and forest i muster more in lorien and the shire because why not they move their armies to eastham net and at this point, I just I just don't want them to win this round. Like, it's pretty likely that with my ring, with there is another way, uh, I can make two more and Mithril Coat and Sting. Uh, there, I can I can probably dunk it next round. Um, and I don't have to move this round, and they'll probably have less than four eyes next round. So all I really want to do is defend against this army. Now this army can go west of net, Helm's Deep, and then attack. Um, this army can also go Parth Celebrant, Lorien, attack. If I had still had um, power to um, power to great, then then they moved through to Parth Celebrant, then I would be able to um, stop them that way. But um, what would you do here as free people? I have Heroic Death. I have Brave Stand. Like there are a lot of uh, things that I can play to defend myself. Um, what I chose to do here, feel free to pause the video and decide what you would do at this point. Um, what I did was I moved all my companions to Fangorn because I don't really have anything urgent that I have to do with these dice. I know that I'm not moving the fellowship again against four eyes. Um, I just plan to destroy the ring next round. And, um, and I have, right, because I have extra healing from there's another way. And I have a uh, Mithril Coat and Sting. So um, my thinking is I'm just going to wait one die. Because if I can just wait one die and see w- where this army goes, I can defend wherever they go. So I just come to Fangorn. And um, then they move towards, they move towards, uh, wait, where do they move towards? They muster once in Orthanc. So at this point, I know there's no way that they can get to 10 victory points this round. So I just move this army and I'm going to wait to see where they go. I get this army into Westamnet to just make it a little less efficient for them to merge up their Orthanc army and the Eastamnet army. And um, they move towards Lorien. So since they move towards Lorien, I move in, I certainly move in Gandalf. I move in Aragorn. I just move in a bunch of people. And then I realize, am I really moving companions next round? Like I'm actually not moving companions next round. Um, these end cards, I can't really play. Um, maybe I should have done things slightly differently. I feel like 
Lorien is more likely to be attacked. Also, I haven't seen Balrog yet, so the Balrog could could easily do some nasty things um, there. I don't know. I don't know exactly what the right split of companions is, but I sort of decided next round I'm destroying the ring. Companions are going to hold out if they can. That's my thinking. So that's what I ended up doing. And um, and then they move to um, Dimrel Dale and leave the Witch King in Parth Celebron. I think at this point, like, you just got to risk the Witch King a bit. Um, and I'm not really sure why you're moving there. They're worried about a military victory from me, but they can get, I think, I guess that's what they're worried about, but they can get a um, military victory themselves. So, um, okay, we go on to next round. I do have Challenge of the King, and there is the red eye in the pool and three other eyes. So um, maybe this was a slight inaccuracy. I knew Challenge of the King was coming up, 50% chance. So if I had kept Aragorn in um, Rohan instead of putting him in Lorien, that probably would have been smarter. I could have had um, Aragorn, I could have had Boromir in Lorien and um, Aragorn in Helm's Deep, and then I have a three-value heroic death, either Gandalf or Aragorn in either place. That would have been slightly better, and I could have played potentially Challenge of the King. So, um, you know, if I happen to roll a bunch of Palantirs. So slight inaccuracy. Okay, uh, one eye, uh, they roll two more, but not uh, three more, which is significant because, um, and I get a nice roll, plenty of movement, and um, we pause for the third time. We're going to play a fourth session um, the next day. Okay, so um, in the end, I start by playing There's Another Way, and this is exactly what I was talking about because I... Um, I heal, uh, I heal one, this tile does, this, this die does not go in. And therefore, um, even if I get like a, like a three, then an I on the last move doesn't kill me. Uh, because I go basically from five up to eight and then this eight up to 11 instead of up to 12. And so that difference between a three value I and a four value I can be really significant um, this round because I want to I want to be prepared to move twice. And with all of these attacks, I think it's very likely that either they can go take Edoras or the Shire. Um, and maybe, maybe I made a mistake with this army. Maybe this army should have just gone back to the Shire. So they would have had to take some stronghold and I can potentially save a stronghold. But I just don't know that I'm going to risk it in the end. So um, anyway, that's why I play There's Another Way right now because I'm thinking I'm going to destroy the ring this round. All right, but I get a one. So, you know, that's really good. Um, I know that Isildur's Bane is still out. I know that Breaking of the Fellowship is still out. Um, so that's why when I said a three, if the, if I had drawn the three, I would have revealed that would have been two. And then I would have gotten hit by breaking the fellowship and then hid. So that's what happens here. Um, because I rolled enough, um, character dice, I'm willing to, um, reveal myself. Maybe they discarded breaking the fellowship earlier. I don't know. Um, so I reveal myself uh, they do have breaking the fellowship and, um, I take one anyway, but it's still only one and now I hide. So, um, that's obviously really good for me. Um, they play, uh, Isildur's Bane here, which is, um, a nice choice because what else are they going to do? I was very likely to destroy the ring. Otherwise, if I take three corruption right here, I go up to nine and then, um, my last movement really would kill me with an eye. Um, the other thing that can happen is I could get the one stop reveal here with his elders main, which would reveal me. And then I would have to hide again. And then if I get stopped, which is unlikely, but if I get stopped, then I do get stalled. So if for all these reasons, it makes sense to play is elders main and they do, um, but they get an eye. So um, they had good luck with Foul Thing. They had good luck with Orc Patrol, um, but they had bad luck with Isildur Spain. So overall, I feel like the hunt has been relatively fair. Um, I did get, you know, lucky to avoid the um, eyes when I needed to 
in um, in a couple steps, but I did hit a red tile. We did get a blue tile. You know, I I don't know. I feel like it's it's been relatively fair. All right. So with that, I just moved the fellowship and um, we get it too. So that was 18 turns, an incredibly epic game. Um, I really enjoyed it. Let me show you the statistics. Um, you can see that um, there were a lot of combat dice rolled by everyone. Uh, let me make sure you can see that. Yeah. So um, overall, in the end, pretty balanced action dice. You can see that um, Shadow got quite high on eyes rolled, um, which in some ways helped them in Mordor. Um, and they, in fact, put in even more eyes with this eye. So, um, and you can see that we were pretty bad at combat. They were minus eight on sixes, minus four on fives. And I was minus four on sixes, minus one on five. So obviously minus eight on sixes is quite painful um, and made some of their military campaigns uh, worse. But, um, you know, I think there were some overall... Um, maybe a little too cautious military plays by shadow. Um, I think, you know, Corsairs, when you have a chance to get into Dol Amroth, when it only has three regulars, is always, it's always nice. Though I do realize the risk of, of military victory at that point in the game. And um, I think this just shows that there was some really interesting um, action token play around Mordor, how I managed to uh, stall myself <laughs> by waiting to the last action to, uh, to try and move. Uh, trying to be maybe a little too clever to avoid cruel weather. And um, I think it just shows a nice example of what happens when you separate fellow, uh, separate companions early, use them for military defense, create military threats, um, and be able to not just create military threats for attacking and military victory, but also to recapture your own um, strongholds to give the fellowship time. So um, thanks very much for the game, and uh, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good rest of the day.